Hey guys, I'm Aaron, and today I want to talk a little bit about how arcs and circles work inside of SketchUp. So this topic has actually come up a couple of times recently in, uh, I've seen it in some posts on the forum and comments on videos, uh, just about exactly how it works. Um, as far as something would be called a true arc or a true circle versus the segmented geometry that's created by SketchUp. So I want to dive in and talk how that works, um, exactly what happens and what you can expect and what you actually need to do with it. Let's take a look. All right, so first things first, uh, this we have here, I just drew a little, a circle and an arc. And if I pick on it, you can actually see it if I zoom in on the circle, you can see the segments, see these little, it's a series of straight lines that connect together into a circle. This is how SketchUp draws this geometry. So it draws this in a series of segments. It's what makes it so quick and easy to create geometry like this is that it's actually just working with a bunch of surfaces. Um, just to, we're, we're gonna start with facts. We're not gonna talk about how you'd use it yet, but just to start with the basics, a default circle has 24 sides. You can see here if I select the circle, I look in the entity info, I can see how many I have here. If I want to, I could actually come in and make that more or less. If I type 12, you'll see those segments much more pronounced. If I jump up to something like 48, they're harder to see. If I jump double that to 96, don't worry, I did that math ahead of time. I'm not doing that on the fly. You can see that they, they virtually go away. If I zoom in here, eventually I will be able to see the actual individual lines from here to here, but they're significantly smaller. Um, this is, of course, when you come in to draw a circle. So if I if I come in here and I go circle, uh, in the measurements box down here, it says how many sides do you want to draw in? Uh, and then as I pull that across, and I'm, I'm going to do something exact measurement. I'm going to make this 10 inch radius. And uh, that means from one side to the other is exactly 20. But I can change that as I put it in. So if I come in here, this, this is the reason I did this. If I, if I select this circle, it's going to tell me this is a 10 inch radius. So if I draw a line from one side straight across the other side, it's going to tell me that that is one foot eight down in the measurements box, 20 inches. So this is important to note. So if I go from here to here, 20 inches, that line is 20 inches, one foot eight. Now, if I go from the next segment to the next segment down, same thing, it's going to tell me that's one foot eight. If I split that, right? If I go in the middle, if I go from the middle of this edge to the middle of this edge, my measurements box says that is approximately one foot seven and 13 sixteenths. So from the middle of this surface, I'm not, or this, this face right here, I'm not actually getting that full 20 inches. I'm getting about three sixteenths less. So this is important. This is, I mean, of, of all the stuff we're talking about, this is probably one of the most important parts. When you look at a circle, SketchUp knows that this circle is created based on this 10 inch radius. So from the center to any of these points is always gonna be 10 inch. What happens in between though, is it's chopping that chunk off. So it is a little bit off. It's just something to know. So if, if I ever have uh, you know, something where I need to come in and come up with an exact measurement at the circle cut into so many sides, I need to make sure that those points I'm cutting at are at points. This is why we make a big deal about when you draw a circle, how many segments you use. We always, a lot of times we'll recommend, put your segments in and call it, you know, something that's a, divisible by four. So you always have the same number of segments in each quadrant. How many in there is gonna depend on what you're using it for. So if I wanted to do something where I was doing a lot of tangential work, like uh, circles bumping up against circles or arcs coming off of circles, something like that. It's going to be a little more tricky with SketchUp than maybe some other drawing program that's, that's uh, you know, a different vector-based program because I'm not necessarily going to have those points where I need them to figure out like tangential connections or anything like that. So it is important to make sure you understand where those points are and that those points are on the circle whereas the lines actually cut inside. SketchUp does remember that this is a circle. So as long as it's a circle here, I can do things like I can change my radius. I can change the segments. I can do that sort of thing 
as I'm working with the circle because it remembers that. Until I do something like, say, say I come in here and I push pull this up. So now it still remembers this is a circle, but because it's connected to other geometry, I can't change the segments. So the points I have on here are the only points I will have as long as this is connected to this other geometry. Same thing goes for arcs as I draw arcs. So I drew, drew this arc, drew it as 12, just snapped it across to a point. Same thing here, I can come in here and I can increase or decrease the number of points in this arc. And again, if I look, if I, if I come in here, and let's see, let's, let's make this something nice and even. We'll make this exactly three foot. So if I come in here and I draw a line from here back to the center of that radius, that line is exactly three foot. So any of these points back to the radius is going to show exactly three foot. From in between, if I go to the center point of one of these segments, there it's two foot, 11, 11, 16. So it's not going to show the same because the actual true arc goes just outside of that by a couple sixteenths of an inch. Now, this is good to know. And I'll be totally honest, for a lot of geometry that gets created for architecture, larger models like that, this is perfectly fine. This is having this broken into segments and sometimes can actually work in your benefit because you can break it down into pieces that you're gonna work with. There's sometimes you wanna be more conscious or increased geometry. So let's look at a couple examples. So let's say this geometry that I created, this, this arc and this circle are getting used to create uh, maybe this is a site plan. This is, I know, super simplified, but I wanted you to see the, the original geometry. Here's this, here's this. Um, is this going to matter? Is this going to be significant to show where this circular building sits on this site plan with an arc here? I don't know, maybe. Maybe in a case like, so if I'm just looking at this from above and this is, I'm going to go and lay out and put some dimensions on here and this is all that it is, this is probably okay. This is probably fine. If I'm going to go in and maybe I have these, these are some sort of steel panels that have to be detailed that wrap around a circle, probably not going to work, right? Because if I go view hidden geometry and I see this, this is a flat panel, this is a flat panel, this is a flat panel. So it's not going to be ideal to, to detail out these pieces. Now, maybe these pieces are just big flat pieces like this, and this is actually how it's being built. If so, great. If I actually need details of this geometry curving around the true circle, I'm going to want to increase the number of sides for the circle first before I come in and extrude it. So in that case, I don't know, it's possible it's enough information, it's possible it is enough geometry, but it might be a little bit short if I need to go into more detailing this. So let's talk about scaling stuff down and uh, say we're printing this out. So this, I'm, I'm going to put this into a 3D print and, and print it out. Uh, I'll take this and I'm going to do a follow me create something like that. So say these are pieces I'm going to actually print out. Is this enough information? Is this enough sides? So these are both 24, this donut or washer or whatever you want to call it. Uh, 24 sides, 24 sides. Is that going to be big enough? Well, if this whole thing is like a quarter inch across, then you know what? That should be more than enough detail to get me the circle that I need. Same thing here. This little, this little tube thing I'm creating here, say this is like an inch across like that. 24 sides is more than enough. Now, if this is much larger, this is going to be cut up into multiple pieces and this is going to fill my print bed a whole bunch of times and this is a detail of a building or something like that, then I probably want to increase the number of sides. Same thing here. If this is going to be a large piece that I want to print out, the size of a pool noodle, I'm going to actually see these segmented sides when I print it. So the question comes across, well, why don't I just put all of my circles in as, you know, 96 sides or 999 sides? Why don't I just make them all that big? Well, the issue comes very quickly in the amount of geometry putting the sketch up. So it is going to behave quicker, more snappy, better. I'm going to have fewer snap points to snap to if I don't have all those extra points. So again, depending on what I'm doing, a lot of times will scale my circles or my arcs depending on how big the geometry is. So if this is a small piece of detail, I might go with 12 even sides because I don't even need 24 if this is only you know, a quarter inch across. Something large, say this is a foot across here, I'll probably bump that up if I'm 3D printing it out to like 96 sides just to give myself a little more smoothness around the outside. But then other practical applications come in too, right? Am I going to take that? Am I going to sand it to remove the print lines anyhow? If so, those segments are less important or mean a little bit less at that point. Uh, another example, what if I'm going to take this and I'm going to export this to a CNC machine to get cut out of a piece of plywood? 
Well, this is a whole different answer because if I export this geometry as a 3D DXF, it's important, a 3D DXF, not a 2D. You have an option when you export DXFs to do 2D or 3D. So even though it's cut flat, if you export this as a 3D DXF, that 3D DXF is going to take this segmented circle and translate it into a true curve. Same with this arc. As long as these aren't broken, right? So as long as this is a one circle and this is one arc, it's going to look at the radius and it's going to export that geometry as a true arc. It's going to export this circle as a true circle. So the file that exports and actually goes to your CNC will give you nice true curves, even though I see segments right here inside of SketchUp. So I'm hoping that cleared up the questions or concerns uh, of how SketchUp deals with these arcs. And like I said, this is just fundamental. This is how the, the drawing <coughs> program works. This is how it creates that geometry. Um, so it's kind of fundamental to the function of SketchUp. The important thing is that you understand how it works and how it works in relation to what you are modeling for. We talk about this all the time. Level of detail is extremely important, but it is also extremely tightly tied to what you're doing. If your whole goal is to create something that you're gonna go render, totally different needs and requirements in your model than if what you're taking is gonna to go to a CNC machine or a 3D printer. So it's important to model to what your final deliverable is gonna be. And that's just another thing you need to keep in mind is how circles and arcs are gonna work. If you like that video, click like down below. And if you haven't already, please do subscribe. We create a whole bunch of videos every week and you'll be notified of all of them if you subscribe. More importantly though, leave us a comment down below. Uh, have you run into this issue? Is this helpful for you? Are there other ideas you think would make good videos or questions you have? We like making these videos a lot, but we like them even more when they're showing something you wanna see. Thank you.